I proposed this idea initially before 2.0 went live, and I'm here to propose it again, even though some people may call me crazy. I still think that Firefly is Sam, and there is so much more evidence in support of that now than what I had before, that it is almost indisputable. The only people who are going to argue with me that Firefly is not Sam are people who have not been paying attention in the story, and people who want to be a contrarian for the sake of being a contrarian. So let's talk about it, but this time with a little bit more depth. So for those who are unaware, my initial theory on on Firefly being Sam was based entirely in their color palette. Firefly and Sam both use the same four colors, green, silver, black, and yellow. The average ratio of their colors was almost identical, even down to their fourth most used color being yellow. Then, as I looked into it more, I realized that in the scene in the White Knight 2.0 trailer when Sam was flying an Acheron, he had a pair of glowing green wings that looked somewhat similar to that of an actual Firefly. And at the time, that's where I ended it, because I thought it was far too much of a coincidence to not be intentional. However, speaking now, after the update dropped, it is way more on the nose than that. Upon closer inspection, that is in fact not a pair of wings, but rather is the exact same cape that Firefly is wearing. And it's not just somewhat similar, it is identical down to the streamers on the left and right side. And if I'm being honest, I don't think it gets much clearer than that, because yes, there are a lot of characters who look somewhat similar in one form or another, but there is not a single instance of it being as on the nose as that. Now all of that is just design wise, but another question I keep asking people is this. How can a self-proclaimed and fully confirmed stowaway be chronically ill and stuck inside of a cabin, yet somehow manage to travel all the way across the universe? The way that she describes her illness is that she is not in control of her body and is under strict medical procedures by doctors. And the reason she enjoys Penacone so much is because inside the dream world, she can actually be a functioning human. And that line would be fine if she was native to Penacone. But as I said, she's a stowaway, so how the hell did she get there? So here's my theory. Firefly is Sam, and she wears that giant mech suit because it gives her the ability to actually function outside of the dream world. And the reason that she is considered a stowaway, but still somehow managed to get past the reception desk is because when they handed out an invite, they gave it to Sam specifically. And since the family didn't know that anybody was piloting that robot, they had no record of Firefly ever existing, and thereby did not address an invitation to her specifically. However, seeing as they could still invite a friend but didn't want to reveal Firefly's secret, they opted to hiding away Firefly inside of Sam's armor and giving the invitation to Silverwolf. And this idea would not only explain why Firefly was able to travel across half the universe despite being sick, but would also also explain why she's considered a stowaway but managed to get past security. Also, a bit of a weird choice in words using stowaway. It's not an uncommon word by any stretch of the imagination, but usually when you say stowaway, you're referencing something that's hidden within something else. And calling Firefly a stowaway would absolutely fit that description if she was inside of Sam. And while this next bit is nowhere near as concrete, there is some softcore evidence. We are currently in version 2.0. We have barely gotten the chance to get to no Firefly, and this story is allegedly gonna stretch until 2.4. On the roof scene with her, Firefly mentioned a whole bunch of things that would be absolutely irrelevant in the event that she does stay dead. And unlike the Ting Yun situation, where the entirety of the Lofu was awful writing and her death happened at the end, Firefly is in a different boat altogether. It would not make sense for that scene to happen the way that it did if Firefly does in fact remain dead. And with that, I bring myself to the biggest pain in the neck for this theory, and that is Firefly is dead. At least, we think that she is dead. I personally do not think that Firefly is actually deceased, and I do believe we're gonna see her again at some point in the story. So for those who don't know, I'm gonna call this thing the Reaper, not the meme, because I think that's stupid. Towards the tail end of the 2.0 questline, Firefly gets brutally impaled by the Reaper, and in this moment, she is assumed dead, because unlike dying through any other means inside of the dream world, when you get killed by the Reaper, you have a spiritual death in real life. However, this scene is very weird, because I can't help but wonder why the Reaper, now of all times, decided to kill one person and immediately run away. That entire interaction in of itself is immediately suspicious, but keen eye players would have noticed something else. Shortly after getting impaled, when her body starts to fade away, we watch a golden spark slowly ascend upwards and off camera, and then, a few scenes later, 
Acheron takes the golden flame in her hand and sends it back to the waking world. Currently, it is not known whether or not this actually did anything. However, maybe through Acheron's intervention, Firefly could have been spared. Now, all of this said, it does bring up another question entirely, and that is, how in the fuck did Sam manage to get there so fast? Even assuming if the Trailblazer, Acheron, and Black Swan stayed behind to mourn for a little while, the fact that Firefly was stabbed in the chest and moments later Sam was going on a rampage throughout the facility doesn't quite make sense. Into that, I would like to pose the second part of my idea, and that is Sam and Firefly are individual entities, but they can work together if they want to. Think of this like a sort of Eddie Brock and Venom kind of relationship. On paper, they can both act independently of one another. However, one person is at a severe disadvantage unless they have a host. In Firefly's case, she's Venom and Eddie Brock is Sam. So in theory, even if Firefly does go down, Sam is still capable of engaging in combat without her support. And one thing that you'll notice about that boss fight with Sam is that at literally no point in the fight does he ever activate those wings that we see him have in the trailer. Now this could have been a creative decision on behalf of the art designers, however a creative decision has to have some sort of meaning behind it. And I will argue that the meaning behind it in this case scenario is that Firefly is not piloting that myth. That is Sam acting on his own accord, doing things his own way, and if he's successful or not is entirely on him. Now with all that being said, it wouldn't quite explain why Sam suddenly decided to up and abandon Firefly, but I'm going to argue that that death was entirely staged. The Stellaron Hunters are no strangers to playing a different role if it helps them achieve their goals. Kafka and Blade both, on multiple occasions, let themselves get arrested just so they could escape. And in the sense of something that hits closer to home, Silver Wolf once acted like a hologram of herself for upwards of two hours just so she could try and outsmart Herda. So with all of that being said, do you really think Sam is going to be the only person in the Stellaron Hunters who isn't opposed to playing some sort of trick? Also, let me ask you this, isn't it a bit weird to you that Sam was going on a murderous rampage and killing anything that moved, but only decided to stop when he saw the Trailblazer? This is the same guy who just cleared out entire corridors of trash mobs with no mercy, yet for some reason when he sees you, the sentiment changed. It's almost like there was somebody in that moment who didn't want you to get hurt, and there are only two characters who that could be who have some sort of relationship with Sam, and those two characters are Elio and Firefly. Elio has a grand plan where the script cannot be deviated. The Trailblazer is also extremely important in that plan, but that doesn't seem likely. What seems far more likely is that Firefly likes the Trailblazer, and therefore doesn't want to see them get hurt. But if this was the case, then why in the world would Sam suddenly listen to her on this after sending her to die? So now we don't only have one, but two reasons as to why Sam wouldn't want to kill Firefly. And this just brings the actions that we saw a little bit before into question, because as we know on Pentacone, you cannot trust anybody. So if Firefly dying both hinders Sam and goes against his best wishes, what reason would he have of doing it? And I think that the reason he did this was so that he could get closer to the Watchmaker's legacy. Now this is the part where it stops being as concrete and gets a lot more confusing because as it stands we only have roughly a fourth of the entire puzzle. But I believe that Robin and Firefly are very heavily connected to each other and if something happens to Firefly then something happens to Robin. And I believe that the Stellaron hunters knew this, and by using Elio's guidance, they managed to guide the events in such a way that Acheron was in the very same place at the very same time of Firefly being quote-unquote killed. Now this is where it starts to get confusing. Thanks to Acheron being there in the moment, she was able to prevent Firefly from dying indefinitely. But since the circumstances were so strange and Robin was nowhere in sight, her soul was never sent back, hence why she still hurt. And now that Robin's out of the count, the Stellaron Hunters have the ability to secure the Watchmaker's legacy. Now if this all sounds convoluted, impossible, and overly complex, just so we are all very clear, we are talking about the Stellaron Hunters. The people who see the future in all actions that can influence it. This is not out of the question for them, and it never will be. And even if everything that I say here isn't entirely true, one thing is absolutely indisputable, and that is Firefly is Sam. With only one fourth of the 
story being given to us, I am perfectly satisfied with the explanation I just provided you all. And with that, I take my leave. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and I'm out.